So systems biology is, is a, uh, a holistic uh, approach to biology. Uh, what we want to do is to understand how biological phenomenon are uh, driven by the interconnections between all of the different molecules and pieces that come to play. So systems biology in essence is about understanding you know, what are all the components, how do those components interact, and then how does, those, how does that interaction give rise to uh, emergent phenomena, to phenotypes, to you know, what, what actually happens. And, and there are these levels of emergence that happen at, at multiple scales. Like if you think of the brain, which is probably the most complex um, um, uh, emergent you know, piece of matter that we know of uh, 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 to date, uh, you can think about what happens at the molecular level and how those mo molecules come together to form machines, how they form uh, the ability to have action potentials, these digital signals that happen in neurons, how those neurons actually come together to form neural networks, how those neural networks come together to form uh, the different structures of your brain and how they get put together all the way up to, well, how does that make us you know, have the ability to move or to think or to feel or you know, all those kind of things. And so, so, so systems biology is really about, um, yeah, just putting, putting the pieces together and trying to understand biology at a large scale. Uh, and the one other thing I'll add uh, that I think is really exciting these days is uh, scalability in biology. Right? It used to be a career to study a gene. Now you can measure a whole genome in a day uh, and you can uh, you know, start to analyze things very rapidly. And so if you think about most of the uh, life on this earth you know, is microbial and a lot of that life is, has been completely invisible to us. And now you know, through the power of genomics and systems biology we can now actually harness that, look at all of the uh, genetic uh, and genomic variants that's out there build models of it and start to understand how this whole thing is put together. Uh, and speaking of the microbes, they're all you know, inside our own bodies. You know, we have ten times more microbial cells than human cells. All of us have these huge colonies, totally under uh, undiscovered territory that's now opening up. So. so systems biology has its three components to it, which is the technology, it's the biology that drives the problems, it's the technology that enables you to make the measurements, and it's the computation that enables you to uh, piece together the technology in a way that helps you to understand the biology. And so, you know, if you think about it for something like the human genome, you know, you have to have extraordinary technology to be able to measure, you know, for humans, the three billion base pair, six billion if you count both strands, and you need to, you know, measure that. Now you have this, you know, billions of long length of A, T, C's, and G's. There's no way to understand that without taking high, you know, level computation. Uh, to try to unravel that. And that computation has to be deeply rooted in what's happening in biology. Otherwise, you could never piece it together. You'd never understand it in some, you know, some way that doesn't take sort of this integrated systems approach. And if we try to understand the, you know, all the proteins and how they interact to form the functions of our body, it's the same thing. I mean, if you don't take this sort of systems approach with a three-pronged biology uh, technology computation, there's just no way that you're actually going to get to an answer. You know, in the early days, and you know, and you can look back at the history of molecular biology, which was an amazingly exciting uh, revolution in biology. The discovery of the structure of DNA, the, the discovery that you know DNA has these triplet codons, and you read these three base pairs that they encode for amino acids, that code protein. There's, it just it launched this whole notion that biology is fundamentally an information science, and that it's encoded in really uh, ingenious ways, uh, and, it, and these evolved systems are, uh, they can surprise us all the time, they're not parsimonious, they're, you know, they have this evolutionary history to them, uh, but now as we try to unravel and, um, you know, reverse engineer what happened in evolution and, you know, and how our, our bodies actually function, uh, it just, you know, we needed scalable technologies for it to be possible. And so the genome, again, is really the catalytic point because now once you have a genome, you can, de you can delineate, all right, here's what makes up the cell. Now we can start thinking about how those things interact. Now, it's of course not true that there was no such thing as systems biology before the genome. Yeah, if you go back, you know, there's lots of systems theorists. There are people trying to understand biology from a systems point of view. And, you know, physiology is really trying to understand biology from a systems point of view. But I think what differentiates the new systems biology is just the fact that our technologies are so much better that we can just start looking at things at a different scale and a different scope than we could before and the systems approach sort of just becomes totally necessary. 
uh, and, and that's really the biology we're looking, uh, looking forward to. Uh, the National Academies report, uh, you know, calls this the new biology. And that's really true. I mean, the new biology, as we look forward, it just sort of becomes a uh, systems approach to biology because that, that's what we need in order to be scalable to understand the, the breadth and the uh, immense uh, interconnectedness and complexity of biology.